extreme graphics. More like extreme garbage, am I right? With Intel's Arc series getting delayed to oblivion, I think it's a good time to take a look back at at least one early iGPU. A lot better iGPU to test than one that I initially thought would be so bad it would borderline bore me, but then surprise me a little bit. This video is part of GPU June 2, an event celebrating the long and fascinating history of 3D acceleration. Make sure you check out the other videos participating in this event. As the name suggests, the Intel Extreme Graphics 2, included with 865G chipsets, is the sequel to the original Extreme Graphics, which was renowned for being anything but extreme. Unless extreme is a negative word. Released in December of 2003, it features a core clock of up to 266 MHz, two pixel shaders, two TMUs, one ROP, zero vertex shaders, support for DirectX 7, although limited due to lack of TNL, and can use up to 96 MB of system RAM, as VRAM. A new feature introduced with EG2 is called Zone Rendering, which is apparently used to conserve memory bandwidth. This along with other stuff made it a surprisingly big improvement over the first gen, and as we're about to find out, it wasn't entirely piss poor for its day. System used for testing is a PM4 Prescott clocked at 3 GHz, along with 512 MB of dual channel DDR400 RAM. Because unlike the Viacom 9 tested in the last video, the Intel EG2 can take advantage of dual channel RAM. Talk about humiliation. And speaking of humiliation, check out the score in 3 d Mark 2001 SE. Even with a slower CPU than what the Chrome 9 had, the EG2 still beats it considerably. Moving on with actual games, we have Quake 3, which wasn't too bad. Sure, particle effects will bring the frame rate down a little, but it's not atrocious. Max Payne brings more bad news for the Chrome 9, with the EG2 running much more smoothly at higher settings. Granted, when the action heats up, it will struggle a bit, but it didn't break my enjoyment at all. It's a very good showcase. But wait, things start to go downhill when you bring Serious Sam into play. Even at 640x4A, while well, not unplayable, it wasn't very ideal. But we might be able to squeeze more performance by lowering down the settings further. GTA Vice City was just a little bit better than on the consoles, although at 800x600 you will see the FPS go under 20 in very intense scenarios, so I'd recommend playing at 640x4A. Then we get to games after 2003, where the EG2 begins to show its weaknesses. Unreal Tournament 2004 was far from enjoyable, as the EG2 just cannot handle the complex geometry. And the worst part is Tech 17 isn't even the most demanding. Here's Abatros, a fairly small map. It's terrible. The main menu of Need for Speed Most Wanted ran as low as 10 FPS. That's a beautiful sign. In a race it was just about playable, but it might depend on map or what you're doing. Finally we have Half-Life 2 which was not pleasant. Indoor zones were ok, but as soon as we go outside, frame rate tanks majorly, resulting in our 6 FPS minimum. If you wanted to play games from 2006 and onwards, they won't even launch, but that's to be expected. We're really pushing it at that point. So you might have noticed that the Extreme Graphics 2 was never meant for high-end gaming at the time. But not all GPUs at the time were for gaming either, so how does the EG2 fare in other tasks? General desktop usage was ok, there's not much to complain about. It worked well for your office programs. Unfortunately, the drivers are less than stellar. You've got your basics like color correction and display settings, 
but the 3D settings are poor, only giving you options for OpenGL, not Direct 3D. Hold up! A new challenger approaches in the form of the Radeon 9250. This is the shittier 64-bit bus card, which sold for about $50 at the time. This card isn't exactly a powerhouse either, but by comparison, it's quite a lot better, with the 9250 pulling playable frame rates in UT2004 and Need for Speed Most Wanted. We can even launch Oblivion now! Not that I recommend playing it on the 9250 either. But this shows a time where Intel's iGPU paled in comparison to not just low-end dedicated GPUs, but also other integrated GPUs, specifically the ones from ATI and NVIDIA. Nevertheless, for its intended use, which was general day-to-day -day tasks and light gaming, the Intel Extreme Graphics 2 was okay. It never blew anyone away, and that wasn't its main objective. It was a display adapter for the office programs you used at work. And for that purpose, it was okay. Thanks for watching.